Let's talk about the Hunter PGV, which is the you know entry level irrigation valve for residential and light commercial systems. The next step up above this is the ICV, which you'll see in medium to large commercial applications, but you'll see the PGV a lot because they have a pretty large size in this. And the model sizes that you can find are three quarter inch, one inch, one and a half, and two inch sizes of this valve. I've personally never seen a three quarter inch version of this, but I think in 20 years I've only ever seen one or two three quarter inch valves of any make out in the field. It's pretty rare that you're going to find those. And so for the different types of models that you're going to find, you can get a, this is obviously a non-flow control. You can get it with flow control. And there is a, an angle valve version of this, you know, where the input comes in from the bottom or the inlet comes in from the bottom here. This is a called a globe valve or a straight valve. There is a, a male thread. This is a female thread here that comes in either a slip or a threaded inlet. But you can get the male inlet, which is threaded. And you can get a male by male, a male by barb. I think there's a barb by barb, um, and you can get a, an, an anti-siphon valve version of this, you know, which has the, you know, the vacuum breaker uh, on here, and it's basically just this plus a vacuum breaker. And there's also a jar top version of this. And if you're unfamiliar with a jar top, it doesn't have bonnet screws. It's a, a round top. And the bonnet is actually a screw on piece there, which you can take off with generally with your hands and for very quick rebuilding of this valve. Now the pressure range, the, sp the specified pressure, pressure range for all of the sizes is 20 through 150 PSI. Once you get above 150 PSI, then probably you need to move up to an ICV or one of the, the brass bodied valves for a heavier duty or higher pressure, you know, inlet there. The flow range for the three quarter inch and the one inch is 0 0.02 to 40 gallons per minute. And for the one and a half and the two inch versions of this, the flow range is 20 through 120 gallons per minute. Let's talk about the solenoid. It has an encapsulated plunger, which means if you take the solenoid off of here, let's go ahead and do that, that you're not going to lose the plunger inside of there. It's encapsulated, which is a really good feature, and it also helps it to not get, you know, debris caught in there. It's got a little rubber flap on that. So for the solenoid, if it, I couldn't find a um, specification on the manufacturer's website, but I tested all the ones I had on the truck, and generally all of them will show at 17 or 18 ohms, which is what you'll get for a, a functioning solenoid. So let's talk about some of the, the features on this. When you uh, undo the bolts on the bonnet here, they're captive, meaning that they, you know, once you take this apart, you're not going to lose the bolts. They're not going to fall out of the bonnet. You can use a pressure regulator that screws in here, and then you put the solenoid in on top of that. That's called an AccuSync, which is the Hunter version of a pressure regulator, which is an optional feature. You can get this in a version for reclaimed water or effluent water, sometimes it's called. You can also get a DC latching solenoid for this, which works with a DC powered timer, you know, which is a little small timer. The node is the Hunter version that you can get in a one or a four zone setup. And it's basically a battery powered timer that you put in with the valve in the valve pit. And it just stays right there and you program it separate from the rest of the system, which is good if you need to put a valve that's, you know, either doesn't have a 120 volt timer on the system or it's just a one one valve system or it's so far away from the timer that it's you know not practical to run wires out to it and for the bonnet bolts you can use either a flathead a standard screwdriver a Phillips screwdriver or a 5 16 inch nut on here let's go ahead and take apart this PGV and do a 
a mock rebuild on it. Okay, on the PGV we have captured bolts or screws on here, so these are not going to fall out on you. But if we're going to just, you know, take a look at the existing uh, parts here and not rebuild it with brand new parts. But as a contractor, I mentioned this in all the videos, but if I'm going to do a rebuild, if there's a problem with a the valve, then I'm just going to rebuild it and basically put all new stuff in it except for the valve body that's glued in. I mean, sometimes the valve body is cracked and that's the problem itself, but a lot of times, most of the time, it's just the stuff, the diaphragm, the solenoid or something like that. So as you take it apart, just inspect everything, make sure there's no damage, no grit or anything that's caught up in here. There's a tiny little pilot hole here for the uh, solenoid to work. Inspect that. Take our spring out. Now be careful with the diaphragm here on this PGV. Let's get this out here. And also, you know, inspect your diaphragm seat and just make sure that this is not clogged up. There's little tiny holes in this. And as you look down inside of here, just inspect and make sure that there's nothing down inside the valve body. I you know, can't tell you the number of times that I open these up and there's little pebbles down in here, rocks or even shards of broken PVC from a broken main line or something that ends up in there. Maybe stick your finger down in there and see if you can feel anything that's happening. Inspect. This one's got a little bit deeper of a, a seat right here for the diaphragm. And also there's a little hole right here, the, the opposite end of the hole for the uh, the solenoid to operate. I think it's called the pilot tube. Um, but when we look here at the diaphragm, one thing to be careful of is this little nub here. And this fits in the hole, that the, the pilot hole for the solenoid operation. And a lot of times what I'll find if I've come behind another contractor, if they've rebuilt this or whatever, they've smooshed this down in here and it's caused a problem and the solenoid isn't working. So when you put this back together, just be careful. The first thing I do usually is just seat that down in there and then put the rest of this, the, the diaphragm back in there. But before, let's put it back together. Let's put our our diaphragm seat back in there. Make sure that there's no debris kind of causing that to hang up there. So let's push this back together. I said make sure that that goes easily back down in that hole and that this little lip seats nicely down in there. We'll put our spring back on. And as we put our top back on here, just be careful about how you put this top back on because this nub goes both ways. It goes down into the body, but it also goes up into the bonnet here. So I like to kind of just seat it back on there and just allow it to slide easily back down over that nub. And you can kind of feel it as you're putting it on there. If it's smushed or, or crushed down in there, you'll kind of feel it and it'll cause a problem. So let's go ahead and put this back together. And there we go, a really simple rebuild on this. One of the reasons I like the Hunter PGV so much, you know, equally as much as maybe I like the, uh, the Rainbird PGA, is that it's just a super simple rebuild. And very rarely do you have to rebuild it unless just something has got up in there and, um, you know, getting in between the, the diaphragm and the seat. But overall, super good valve.